Hi everyone, it's Shannon and welcome to my channel, The Daily DIYer. Today we're gonna be using two unexpected items from Dollar Tree to create a practical and trendy plant stand. So let's go ahead and head on into Dollar Tree and I'll show you those two items you need to grab. First, head over to the cleaning section and pick up six of these broom poles. They're actually made out of metal and those are going to be our plant stand legs. Then you're also going to need to grab three of these plungers. I know, plungers, right? But actually these wooden handles come in so handy for so many different things. So make sure to grab three of those for this project. You'll also need to head over to the hardware store or dig through your scrap wood pile. You're gonna need a one by 12 that is eight foot long or my store was completely out of the eight foot long one so I picked up two four foot one by 12s instead. And here you see Shannon in her natural habitat digging through a pile of wood. Ah uh, yes, in the natural Home Depot habitat where good pieces of wood are rare. Yes, and it has to pass my inspection. That is nice. That... No, it's not, it's gonna split. So this is okay. But it's not a, oh, this is nice. This is nice. This is nice, not we a bunch of knots. have a winner. No cracks. And while you're at the hardware store, they will even cut your boards down for you. And we only need three pieces, so really don't let this step scare you at all. Basically, it's just three simple cuts. And also, while you're at the hardware store, grab yourself some screws if you don't have them already. I'm using general purpose screws that are one and five eighths inch long. All right, so now back home in my workshop, I am cutting down my first one by 12 board into two pieces. And each one of these is both going to be 16 inches long. Now, like I said earlier, my hardware store is out of the eight foot long pieces. So I had to buy two four foot long pieces and I wanted my plant stand to be four feet long. So what I did is I actually just trimmed off the ends and squared them up. That way my ends would be nice and square, but I wasn't going to lose any of the length. And now at this point, you should have three boards total. You should have two that are 16 inches long and one that is four feet long. After you have all of your pieces cut, you can take them over and sand them. I am using an orbital sander with 80 grit sandpaper. However, of course, you can always just hand sand these down too. Dollar Tree even carries sandpaper. Now I can't be the only one that dreads taking stickers off of Dollar Tree products. I don't know what it is about the adhesive on these stickers, but they just do not want to give up. I feel the same way about stickers from Marshalls. If you guys have other places that have horrible stickers that you have to take off and remove, let me know down in the comments below, but I think Dollar Tree definitely takes the cake on this one. Let me show you how I kind of found a good way to remove them a little bit more easily. I'm using a heat gun and I mean, you have to get really close up on your stickers. Luckily these handles are metal, so it's not like plastic underneath and they're not gonna melt. Um, and then you just take a metal razor blade very carefully. These still can cut you, so be very careful and just kind of get up underneath your stickers and pull them away. They're still gonna leave some adhesive behind, so take some goo gun and add that on there and rub the extra adhesive off. And you wanna make sure you do this on all six of your broom handles. Also remove those plastic hook ends of your handles, but leave the end where your broom or mop would attach at the bottom. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can actually take a hefty, chunky nail and hammer them right into your pole to create your holes, or you can take a drill and drill through them. Just make sure you're using a metal drill bit. 
And the only difference is you're gonna get kind of a smashed look if you just use the nails. But if you use a drill, you're not going to kind of smush your poles. But honestly, I think either way would work great. We ended up doing kind of a combination. We would put a hole in the top with the nail and then use the drill to drill through the other side. This part, it's really handy to have someone helping you out just to make sure your poles are not rolling around. You wanna make sure you drill your holes or hammer your holes into the same side. So you don't want them all over the place. You want your holes going from top to bottom all the way down. And now is a great time to pause this screen, take a screenshot or write down these measurements. Four of your poles are gonna have four holes in them and two are going to have two holes in them at these measurements. And I also wanna mention that all these measurements are measured from the top down to the bottom piece. The bottom plastic piece is going to be our feet. So your three quarter inch is going to be at the end where your uh, piece came off for the handle. And then you'll measure down from there. Now we can go ahead and start building our piece. I did pre-drill some pilot holes into the wood so I wouldn't split the wood as we were screwing the legs onto the shelves. And you'll see here, we just kind of lined up the poles, found the middle, marked them, and then drilled pilot holes with a wood drill bit. And now finally we can start building this shelf and it's gonna come together really, really quickly. So we're gonna start with the four corners on the four foot long board and then add in our uh, center piece or our center pole after those four corners are drilled in. The very bottom hole that was measured down to 42 inches, that's gonna be the bottom hole we're gonna start with on our poles. So here's our overview of what we've got so far. All of the bottom holes are drilled onto that four foot long board. Now we can start adding in the 16 inch long shelf pieces. Those are gonna go at the 24 inch mark and also at the six inch mark. So it's really starting to look like something, right? We have that long shelf on the bottom and the two smaller ones on the side. And remember those plungers that I had you grab from the Dollar Tree? Yeah, we're gonna grab those back out. You need all three of those. We have to get the fun stickers off of these two. <laughs> I did the exact same thing. I used the heat gun and the plastic razor blade and the goo gun to get the stickers off and took the plungers off the bottom. No, we're not gonna be using the rubber part. We're just gonna be using the wood part. So these are gonna go on those very top holes that we marked at three quarters of an inch. I just literally laid them on the shelf and mark where I needed to cut them. You will have to do all three of them the same because we th have three spots where these are going to go. So I took these over to my miter saw and cut them all down to size. If you don't have a miter saw for this, you can also use a hand saw and miter box that you can find on Amazon for only maybe about $12, $15. Another one of those staples I have to have in my craft stash when I'm in my craft workshop um, and creating in there. But when I'm in my wood shop, of course, I'm always gonna be using my handy dandy miter saw. And now you can see where these are being attached. I did pre-drill holes through the holes that were in the metal pieces into the center of the plunger wood pieces before using the same screws to attach them. Now 
Now we're also going to create a sort of center bar. It's kind of gonna look like a closet bar so we can hang plants from that top and middle. But not only that, it's also gonna give our piece some support and brace it as well. So I had a dowel rod on hand. I'm not even sure how thick it was. It was from Walmart, I believe. And it was just wide enough that I knew my screws were not going to bust it. So make sure that when you're purchasing a dowel rod, you also make sure your screws aren't too big for it. If you can get one that is the same size as your plunger handles, that would definitely work. But obviously the, pro the plunger handles are not long enough. I I needed a longer piece one that was about three foot long so we did pre-drill holes into the tops of the wider piece of or the wider area over the longer part of the shelf and then use the same screws to attach those from both sides Now this is optional. Our shelf kind of wobbled back and forth a little bit. So Brian decided he was gonna add some supports right behind each one of the shelves. This is just some extra scrap wood we have. You can even buy square dowels from Walmart too that would fit this. You just need to cut them down to size so they fit in between the shelves. This is in the very back so you won't even see it. We just used a little bit of wood glue on there and then tacked it in with some brad nails. But you could even just clamp them and let your wood glue dry and do without the nails too. And finally for the most fun part of all and that is adding our plants and I am not gonna lie I am pretty good at crafting and building but unfortunately I am awful and terrible at gardening so all of these plants are faux plants. I just grabbed a bunch that I had around the house just to show you how cute this would be all decorated up. You could obviously use real plants for this. Just make sure you would seal your wood. I would suggest maybe a polycrylic. Um, you could also get really creative and spray paint your poles and make them a different color if you didn't like the black. And another great idea is to use these hooks. These are also from Dollar Tree and you can hang them from your plunger handle that you used for the top of this plant stand and hang things off the side even. And I know I'm calling this a plant stand, but I know you could use this in so many different ways. So if you guys have other ideas, leave those down in the comments below. For me, I am so over the moon excited about this project. It probably cost maybe $25 to create. So a bargain and it looks good and it functions well and it's sturdy. So definitely give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this project, hit that subscribe button. If you enjoy budget friendly DIYs like this one, so you can stick around and join me for new tutorials and ideas that I share with you here every single week. Thanks so much for joining me and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone.